Yo. That's a telemarketer. Yo, peace to the gods. I want to speak on the situation with Mob James, alright? I'm not a person who care. I don't, I don't carry myself as a street person, and I don't glorify the streets, and I don't normalize the streets. I hate the streets because I believe they're genocidal. But at the same time, the Mob James story saddens me. If you don't know, Mob James is a Piru gang member. The Pyrus are a gang from California that originated on Piru Street in Compton. He became famous over the last four, three, three to four years because he was a he was a part of the the, the circle of Shook Shook Knight, CEO of Death Row Records. He was a part of that circle early on. Everybody knows that Shook Knight was from a Piru neighborhood. And when he became rich, powerful, and had his record label, he hired these gang members as his security force. So James has become famous because he has been telling stories about that particular period of time. So he, his Vlad TV interview into a career, he, he was able to create his own platform from that interview because Pete's story was so compelling and it was, it was such an emotional story that people actually cried for him. So he started his own platform. Pot, got a, you know, he's been hosting his podcast, Gangster Chronicles, for quite some time. He travels the world, and his life has completely changed. He was just a guy in the hood, in a motorcycle club. Now he's famous, a celebrity. His past came back to haunt him. In 2002, he informed on somebody. He informed on somebody who was his good friend, and I'm not going to go into the, did he do it, did he not do it. He did it. You know, these people that informed that he informed on, it's not like these are just strangers. These are not people that he didn't know. These are, you know, the person that he told on, informed on, Bob James was the godfather of his child. And the wife of this guy that Bob James told on said that, yeah, James was a good friend of ours. We considered him, you know, he was like the godfather to our children. He was the best friend. So J James essentially told on his best friend, and that's been proven. His best friend has been free for about eight years, and he hasn't really pushed the issue. You know, it's been rumblings for the past 20 years. People have been speculating about the fact that James may have, may, may have been an informant, but nobody really had any concrete evidence until now. And that's because nobody really pursued the paperwork. Paperwork has just been released inside the paperwork of pictures, because the government has to give you your discovery, which is the information that they're using to convict you. You have to, they have to give you that information so that your, def your defense counsel, your defense lawyer can adequately defend you. They can't withhold information from you. So they gave him, and in the evidence that they gave this guy were pictures, surveillance photos of Mob James and this dude. And come on, you know who you're in the picture with. If somebody shows you a photo of you and somebody that you know... You know who that is in that photo. It's not like, oh, I don't know who this person is in the photo. You, you know, you're going to be able to identify who's in a photo with you. You know, in this particular photo, James was in, in the front yard of this guy's house. James was the godfather to this guy's um, child. He was his best friend. So you mean to tell me he doesn't know how to, he can't identify James in the photo? You know, come on. So... In a photograph, James is marked as confidential informant. And basically, the guy was selling drugs, and James bought drugs from, for, from him for law enforcement so that he can reduce his own sentence. Nine times out of ten, James got, into, got jammed up on some charge, and he started uh, helping the police get convictions. You know, Sometimes that's not even the case. Sometimes people just work for law enforcement. They will allow you to, to sell drugs. And they'll pay you, you know, so your job is essentially turning people in. It, you don't even necessarily have to be in trouble in order to, to, to get that proposition. But my thought to this, I think this is a, it's a strong message to this. Don't get involved in the street culture, because the street culture is just... I mean, just look at this situation. This guy is 57 years old, and a decision that he made when he was about 39 years old has come back to haunt him, and it's going to potentially ruin his new career. And that's just a perfect example of how the streets totally destroy. That's why I tell people, do not get involved in the streets, because the street culture has its own rules, it has its own way of life, its own do's and don'ts, it has its own 
you know, principles and standards. And those principles and standards are just, everybody can't live up to them. You know, they're too strict, they're just, I don't know, I just, I just think it's a shame. You know, if you don't get involved in the street life, you won't have to worry about something from your past coming back to haunt you. I, I just think that's the lesson in all of this. Peace.